guy at the dock said, well, I got to hand it to you. You're, you're a good driver. Cause most guys would take an hour to get in here. Well, that's a clue. You shouldn't have trucks like this coming in here. You know, customer gets his stuff. Crete gets their money for delivering, but the driver, if he touches a car or the gate or a pedestrian or puts a nick in the, in the truck, my skirts are dragging on the ground underneath the trailer. The skirts underneath the tractor are dragging on the ground because it's over the sidewalk and down into the parking lot. So yeah, you risk your, your uh, CDL coming to places like this, you know. And but you get a hundred dollars. You get a hundred dollars dangerous hazardous pay or whatever you want to call it New York City bribery I don't know it's not worth it if you lose your license all this back and forth my my air kept running out because you're hitting the brakes so much it drains your air tanks knowing the Kenworth I had with Werner I would have been sitting out on the street for two minutes waiting for the air to charge up enough before I could move it would have it would have taken even longer because I would have run out of air two or three times on this maneuver as it was I was very low when I finally stopped the truck here I had to let it run for a couple of minutes to fill up again. Now the fun part's going to be getting out of here because we got to do all the same crap to get out of this gate and around and out. Oh, and the guy back there is like, yeah, we didn't want you making too much noise because the neighbors don't like it. There's houses right across the street. You're lucky I wasn't in your living room. <laughs> and there's trees. See the trees? Yeah. On the curb. He said, oh, it's easier if you come in facing the other way and do a blind side to get in mm. I don't think so that tree would have been a problem because I rode the curb over here that tree I would have definitely hit if I had done a blind side. Yeah, it's right on the on the street. Look at these overhead wires. I bet I barely came in under those too. No. No. Never ever again. Uh, I hope everybody out there who's going to have a Whole Foods pizza remembers Kevin and what he had to do to get it. It is good crust. Yeah, but still, it's not even the gluten-free crust. <laughs> so, <laughs> anyway, huh? that was a serious upper body workout. And not really working that steering wheel, I'll tell you. Mm -hmm. Interesting that he said, oh, most drivers would have taken an hour because it actually seemed like, oh, no, what's Kevin doing wrong? Like, why is it taking him so long? And it only took you about, what, 10 minutes, 15. Yeah. But uh, <laughs> it actually only took me two minutes. And then they told me I was at the wrong dock. You got to oh. get over to the other dock. Oh, so I had to start all over, basically. I, mean, <laughs> I said, why don't you just move the building over 10 feet? <laughs> he started laughing. Uh, nope. <laughs> you need to move this building to Ohio, buddy. <laughs> That's what you need to do. <laughs> and how was it coming over the bridge and everything? The tell bridge, us, tell well, us your planning this morning, because you got up at three ten a.m. I got up at three because I knew I had to come over the George Washington Bridge into New York City, and uh, so we came across that bridge and doing the speed limit, basically. The last time I came in was about 6 a.m. and it was walking speed for about two and a half three miles so it took a it took an hour to come in that way so we made it all the way through and then zigzagging up these little tiny streets and residential areas and tight turns and people are parked all over the place where they shouldn't be parked and uh, yeah. and I came to the front of the building and the street was empty so we picked a nice spot along the curb parked there at 6 a.m. and took a nap for two hours and then as we napped the street filled up with trucks and cars and people and kids going to school just down here so when we came around the block to get to the back of the building
that whole street at the end of the block is full of cars and DHL delivery vans because they have a depot right next door. So to make that turn, that left turn, not even a right turn against the curb, but to make the left turn to get into the end street, I was coming between cars that are parked all the way to the corner, which is illegal, and then made it through them, missed uh, the one car on the right side by inches. And then when I got to the next corner at the, at the end of the block, the cars again were parked right up to the end of the corner. past him. So as I came around that corner, I saw that my tail was going to take out a Mercedes Benz, which was parked like his ass was almost hanging out into the street. That's how you think the hundred dollars would have covered the repairs? No. <laughs> no. May as well just tear up your driver's license and walk away from the truck at that point. Hmm. And there were and there were cars on the other side too. But meanwhile there's school buses going back and forth. Double a parking. Street, a street sweeper came along just as I was about to make that turn and wait for him. There was yeah. double parking people just are, before we left. People double parking on the other yeah. street. Yeah. And then coming up here, there was a line of cars behind me. I had to move into the left lane, the oncoming lane, to set up, let all those guys go by. Now I'm blocking traffic front and back and, and trying to make this 90 degree jackknife turn. It's more than 90 degrees, by the way. It's, yeah. a, it's an acute angle because mm -hmm. I had to get into the other dock. So it's going to be a trick getting this thing out of here. And emotionally, what do you do? How do you handle that level of stress? Maybe our, maybe some of the new drivers could hear. What? What? Emotions? emotions. What's that? <laughs> there are no emotions in the moment. If you panic or get flustered or get, you know, cry or something, you're done. You put that all aside, stuff it down somewhere in your back pocket. And then when you're finished, it comes out as rage. <laughs> I can't wait to get back on the interstate now with this. I'm going to play this out really good. Any four-wheelers out there? No. <laughs> My wife, the psychologist, is going to have to deal with this. <laughs> yeah. Anyway. No, seriously, see. how do you stay focused? How do you, how do, you do it? Because we had a viewer ask us that the other day. Like, how do you do it? Hydrate. Hydrate, hydrate, and tell your wife not to offer suggestions. And what, three, four guys out there watching the corners in the back? It's a good thing too, because there was a dumpster on this side I almost hit, and a staircase on this side I almost hit. And cars coming in and cars through coming. the same And it took opening. what, three, three goals, three get out and looks? Mm -hmm. If those guys weren't there, it would have taken about 20 get out and looks, because well, it was crazy. I would have helped you too. Yeah. But, um, so, okay, for new guys who ask that question, you basically just blank out any emotions and focus on driving, on the turns, the yeah. objects. Remember when you turn the wheel this way, the trailer's gonna go that way, and, when you, and then you have to bring it back and line it back up, which is gonna make the trailer do something else. All right. So. And I think what we, what we talked about early on when you were first driving, do not care what other people think. No. You know, I think no. that's really if you, important. If you start thinking, oh, all these people are mad at me and that guy's impatient and somebody's yelling at me now. Don't do that. That all goes in the back pocket with all your feelings, too. Yeah. If, if you start worrying about what people are thinking of you, you're done. Yeah. You'll, you'll, you'll lose it. You'll break down. No. So. You're here to do a job. Do your job. And if people get emotional, that's on them. That's their problem. Do your job. Just stay focused. Yeah. People want their pizza, so, you know, even if you have to pull up a hundred times, yeah. it's okay. I think that's really important because a lot of new drivers worry about how they look. And like they just told you, most drivers, it takes them an hour to get in here. And in and that hour, you just keep doing what you got to do. And every time, every time you park, it's a learning experience. You, you try and do things sensible as possible and build on what you've learned you know your setup is super important but look at your clearances how much room you got in front of you at one point I did get my wheel up on that curb but only yeah. once yeah so it's it's all in your setup and use those mirrors use those mirrors use those mirrors and use your space yeah use as much of the space as you have like I pulled up into that guy's driveway right up against his car 
at one point because I needed that much room to bring the trailer back in here in the right angle. I wonder how many deliveries they get a week. Like how, how used to big trucks are the neighbors? I know, they're, they're in the wrong place. Seriously, <laughs> we should tear this place down or, or turn it into a restaurant, you know. Uh, yeah, or just have, like you said, smaller trucks, not the big yeah. 53 foot. Anyway, all right. Well, thanks, Kevin, for uh, bringing this pizza dough mix all the way from Oregon mm. to New York City. It was a long ride. It was fun while it lasted till the last 10 miles. <laughs> yeah. So there I was at that bakery, just getting the paperwork, getting the signed BOL, and was going to take off. And uh, the fella says, you did a really good job, and I want to give you a loaf of bread. I thought, oh, boy a loaf of bread <laughs> so it's actually a bakery that's what they do there so he had, he got a fresh loaf put it through the slicing machine and bagged it and look at the size of this and these big round loaves uh terra nova bakery arthur avenue's award-winning bread the bronx new york panna di casa bread of the house okay Let's eat. Let's eat some bread. <laughs> we earned it. <laughs> no kidding. Wow. Bye. He's turning, and he's not going to wait for you. He's not waiting. He's no. turning, is he? This Mercedes right here, huh? Yeah, he shouldn't be there. And there's the road. My goodness. Yeah, that's look at that. <sighs> oh, look. The whole bunch of FedEx. Watch this one, huh? Okay, so off we go. <laughs> that was exciting. That'll wake you up on a Tuesday morning. Nope.
Well, I have to give Kevin back his phone. Before we get lost, because we got to go back on trucker's path. There's a truck, that's always a good sign. My phone is full, so we'll see what we can do. More trucks up there, that's good. All right, wish us luck. Now we're going to New Jersey. What town? Millville. Millville. Pick up our next load to take us to Indianapolis. Okay. Thanks everybody for joining us if you got something out of the video or enjoyed the video please do give it a thumbs up yeah I hope you had a laugh <laughs> no inspiration for yeah. perseverance comments down below have I'm you sure, been yeah I'm sure you've had a hard a hard time parking in some places please tell us about it right, subscribe ring the notification bell see you have, later yeah. have a great day with love from Kevin and Tanya <laughs> bye